Hi, my name is Reese, and in this video, I want to compare two one kilowatt hour portable power stations. One has been around for a while and has established itself as a top contender in the field, and the other is a newer one trying to break into a crowded market with its own unique features. Both of these were sent to me by the respective companies. This is the EcoFlow Delta II, and this is the DJI Power 1000. So if you're in the market for a portable power station, these one kilowatt hour devices are a great place to start. That's what I tell people. Because they're portable, you can take them camping or on a road trip, but you can also use them for backup at your house. Both of these guys can run a full-size refrigerator if the power were to go out. So some similarities before I get into comparing the specifics of each of these, both of them have the exact same amount of storage, 1,024 watt hours of storage capacity, although the Delta II has an expansion port, which I'll show you where you can expand that further. They both have the same battery chemistry inside of them, lithium iron phosphate, and both of them are rated for 3,000 cycles down to 80% of the original capacity. And so that means if you charged it up to 100%, down to zero, back up to 100%, every single day you're talking about a decade of use on these batteries. So let's talk about comparisons. The first thing is the physical comparisons. They're kind of similar, although this one is longer and shorter. This one is taller and thinner. They both have handles on either side for carrying them around. Both have screens. You can see this one has two colors, the white and an orange, and this one has two colors, sort of a white and a blue. Uh, I think this one looks a little bit better than that one. In terms of DC outputs, the Delta II has four USB-A. This one only has two. This one has two USB-C outputs, but this one has two, but they're rated at 140 watts output versus the 100 watts over here. Both of these power stations weigh about the same. The Delta II is a little lighter at 27 pounds. This one's 28 pounds. This one has all the outputs and inputs on the front. The Delta II has you know, some on the front, there's an expansion port on the side, and the rest are in the back. Taking a look over here, there's an XT60 port where you can plug solar panels directly into it, charged by wall AC. For AC output, there are six outputs. Only two of them have spots for the grounding plug. And then down here is some 12 volt outputs. This one's your standard car output, and then there's two 12 volt barrel ports. On the 1000, there are only two AC outputs. They both have the grounding plug. There's a spot behind this door to charge by wall AC with a switch to do fast charge or slow charge. On the Delta II, you can choose your charging speed through the smartphone app. This guy doesn't have a smartphone app, but this one has these ports here, which are unique to DJI power stations. They're called an SDC port, smart DC port. And so the Delta II has the ability to plug in a solar panel directly into it. To get solar into the 1000, you need to get this accessory with this kind of port that plugs right into here to get the XT60 port. But the benefit of having this port is that it has some different features, uh, like you can get this adapter to fast charge certain drone batteries from DJI, and I'll show you how that works. But on the downside of offering a specialized port like this means that you have to have extra accessories to get somewhat common ports. Like for example, here's an accessory to get a 12 volt car output. And in my opinion, in terms of build quality, the 1000 has a slight edge over the Delta II. I do like these door covers. They actually work pretty well. And something I found interesting in the user manual for this guy that may speak to the build quality is that it's made to withstand 220 pounds of weight on top of here. I'm not aware of anything like that on the Delta II, although it is made to have an extra battery sit on top of here. Now let's consider input comparisons, starting with my favorite solar power. The Power 1000 has the ability to accept 800 watts of solar power, which is a lot for a one kilowatt hour power station. That's great. However, the downside is that in order to achieve that, you need to purchase two of these MPPT adapters. Here's an example where I have 800 watts of solar connected to the Power 1000. I have four 200 watt portable solar panels. Now they aren't producing 800 watts because of the angle of the sun, but something that's cool on the screen is that you can see the current input voltages on each SDC port, even down to two decimal places. The Delta II is rated for 500 watts of solar input, so it's a little less than the 800, but you don't need any extra adapters. On the back, you just plug in here at the XT60 port, make sure it's under 60 volts. 500 watts is a bit of an odd solar panel wattage, honestly, uh, but what I have right here is a 600 watt solar panel plugged into the Delta II, and the reason why I'm able to do that is because the voltage is under 60 volts and the sun is sort of a later day sun hitting these panels which are flat. And so it's making 300 and 
45 watts at the moment. If you were able to get the maximum solar input consistently on each, then you could recharge the Delta II in a little over two hours and charge the 1000 in a little under an hour and a half. Now let's do an AC recharging test head to head. Both of these batteries are at zero. I just turned on the power to both of them. Start the timer. Both of these guys have a maximum charging rate of 1200 watts. So let's see who gets to 100% first. So here we are at the end. The Power 1000 just hit 100% in one hour and eight minutes and 45 seconds. It is rated to do that whole process zero to 100% in 70 minutes. So it beat that by about a minute and a half. Delta two is still going, it's at 97%, but that one's rated to get to 100% in 80 minutes, so an hour and 20 minutes. And the Delta two gets to 100% in an hour and 18 minutes. Both of them finish a few minutes faster than their stated ratings. Now let's talk about outputs, starting with the AC output. Even though the Power 1000 only has these two outlets, it has a higher output rating. What I have here is a load on both of them pulling their maximum continuous output. So this one has a maximum output of 2200 watts continuous, so it could drain from 100% down to zero at that rate. And the Delta II's rating is 1800 watts of continuous output. So obviously you can hear the fans going because I'm drawing at their maximum rate. And the reason why I have two plugged in here versus one plugged in over there is because these cables are only rated for 15 amps. So I had to actually use two devices to get up to 2200 watts. So besides that continuous output, the surge rating is a little bit different. The 1000 can do 4400 watt surge and the Delta II is rated in the manual as having a 2700 watt surge. Either one of these can start a full-size refrigerator, and I've run them for many hours. I even tested both of these with a 6,000-watt BTU window air conditioner, and I was surprised both of them were able to start and run it without trouble. Now, I can't tell you if either of these can run your air conditioner, but if you need the most surge power to get that compressor started, then the Power 1000 has that 4,400-watt rating. All right, to go head-to-head, -head, I want to do a test on these AC outputs. I want to do an AC efficiency test as well as a sound check with the decibel meter. I'm going to drain the battery with a constant 1000 watt load. So just over a minute has gone by on the timer and we're outputting a little over a thousand watts. And so far I hear no sound from the Power 1000. So at the one minute mark, there is a noticeable difference between these two power stations. The Power 1000, I didn't hear any fan noise at all. On the Delta II, the fans spooled up right away and there is a noticeable noise. So after draining the batteries to 0%, they both lasted exactly 47 minutes before shutting down. The Delta II might have more degradation on the battery from almost two years of occasional use, but surprisingly, even though it had more noticeable fan noise than the 1000, it was actually a bit more efficient with an output of 830 watt hours and the 1000 with a little less output at 820 watt hours. Both of these units have a UPS feature, which basically means if you were to lose grid power, it can switch over to providing power with the battery. This one is rated to do that in 20 milliseconds and this one is rated to do that in 30 milliseconds. Let me do a demonstration. This is as if the grid cut out and you can see the lights just barely flickered when it switched over to battery power. So one of the benefits that the Power 1000 and the DJI power stations have over everyone else is that they have the ability through the SDC port to fast charge certain drone batteries. So I have the Air 3 battery right here and one over there. These are supposed to charge from 10% to 95% in about 30 minutes. Both are at 10% now. This one's going to charge with the normal USB charging hub. And then on this one, I'm gonna use this fast charge cable, run it for 30 minutes, and we'll see what the state of charge is on these batteries. You can see the state of charge of the battery on the screen right here, down to two decimal places. I think that's really cool that you can see what the state of charge is. So the highest I've seen this go is 127 watts. There it is right there to charge the battery. That one is at 72 watts. So after 30 minutes, the battery on the 1000 got up to 93%, and the battery on the USB-C hub in the same amount of time only got up to 70%. So I think it's kind of a poor choice not to have a native solar input right on the power station so you don't have to get one of these extra things and carry it around. But these SDC ports are things they could expand with new features and they allow flexibility. For example, right here, I'm simulating inputting from a solar panel, 100 watts, and I'm outputting to fast charge this drone battery. So if you were out in the field and had a solar panel, 
you could charge by solar and fast charge your drone at the same time. So DJI has these special ports, but the Delta II has some pretty standard features that the DJI doesn't have, like they have a smartphone app, and you can basically monitor and control everything from here with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. And there's also some special things like being able to change the AC recharging speed with a slider and also how it interacts with the EcoFlow smart generator. And also something very important is that you can get a firmware update with the click of a button. You can get a firmware update on the 1000, but you have to use a computer and go through the USB-C port. The Delta II has its own smart DC input and output port on the side. You'd use a cable like this to do things like expand capacity. You could get the Delta a two smart battery which will add an extra one kilowatt hour of storage or you could get the delta max extra battery which would add an additional two kilowatt hours of storage capacity you can also use that port as an input port and connect it up to one of the EcoFlow smart generators. And a small thing to point out about the 1000 is that it has these two quarter inch threaded connections. It's meant to hold up the MPPT, but you could use these to secure it down to something. How about comparing costs and warranty on these two? The warranty is basically the same at five years on either one of these. Although for the Power 1000, you do need to register to get the extra two years to get you up to five years. And in terms of costs, Remember that prices change all the time depending on when you're watching this, but as of right now with a discount code, which is below, you can get the Power 1000 by itself for $549. And with the discount code, again below, you can get the Delta II for $474. So prices change all the time, but as of right now, you can get the Delta II for about $75 less than the Power 1000. So what do you think about these two power stations? Let me know in the comments. Would you want to get the DJI for the higher 2200 watt inverter output and the drone charging feature, which seems to be one of the main selling points? Uh, right now, it only works to fast charge four types of drone batteries. I don't know if they plan to add more drone battery options or use these DC ports for something else in the future, like an extra battery. Or if you have one of these drone batteries that it can fast charge, is that even a big consideration for you? All right, so some of my thoughts is that both of these are high quality power stations. They live up to their specifications. And I've gone over some of the noticeable differences that I can think of. So for your typical AC or DC outputs on a one kilowatt hour portable power station, both of these guys will get the job done. If someone asked me like which power station should I get, you know, price would be a big consideration, but in general, I would point people to getting the Delta II because they don't need extra adapters and they probably don't mind the extra fan noise on heavier loads. Plus they have all the benefits of the smartphone app and the option on the side for the expanded storage or other EcoFlow hardware. But if some of the Power 1000 features fit your situation better, like the drone battery fast charging or the rugged and higher build quality on the power station, the general quieter operation or the dual 140 watt USB-C outputs, and you don't mind not having some of the standard ports that might be on the Delta II and, or nor having the smartphone app, then this might be a power station that fits your situation better. Let me know your thoughts or if you have any questions about these guys down below, please consider subscribing for more solar related content and thank you for watching.